is the lattice energy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to focus on this quantity right here, delta H of formation. So that's what we know. We can construct another pathway that leads to the same place by going this direction. Okay? So let's write that down. So we're going to start off here. One way that we could get to sodium chloride solid is by doing this formation reaction. What's that energy change? Delta H of F. The other thing that we could do is go around this cycle. So if we start here, first step, sublimation. Second step, bond enthalpy. Third step, first ionization energy. Fourth step, electron affinity. And then the fifth step, woo, takes us down to that same place, the sodium chloride solid, and that's our lattice energy. So Hess says that if you take two different paths to get to the same state, the overall enthalpy change will be the same. So this enthalpy change has to be the sum of the enthalpy changes for each step in this process. So we can just add them all up. So I'm going to put that in an equation right here. I'm going to cover up my picture a little bit. We'll go back and refer to it. So I'm going to start with this delta HF. Remember that's the delta H of formation right here. So that enthalpy change has to equal, equal the sum of all the enthalpy changes going around this cycle. So the first enthalpy change was sublimation, right there. So all right, delta H sub. The next enthalpy change was the bond enthalpy for breaking the chloride, chlorine to chlorine bonds. Next was the ionization energy for sodium. Next was the electron affinity. All right, so now we're to here. And the last step was this lattice energy, U, and that's what we're trying to calculate. Okay, so here's the equation. So we have to kind of look at this picture to construct this equation. So for other kinds of problems, it might be different. Because if you have to make a plus two charged cation, you're going to have an IE1 and an IE2. If you have to make a minus two charged anion, you're going to have an EA1 and an EA2. It was a half times the bond enthalpy in this case, but it might not be half in every case. So you really need to think about the processes that are going on and then write this down each time. So again, delta H of F equals the sum of the delta H's for going through this other pathway, through each of these steps. Okay, now what we're going to do is solve for U. So we're going to take this equation and solve for lattice energy because that's the quantity that we want to know. So I do that. I'm going to subtract all these other terms from this side of the equation. So I subtract delta H of sublimation from both sides, get that term, and so on. So this is what we end up with. So delta H of sublimation. Notice I put in parentheses a little label so I know what sublimation I'm talking about. I want the delta H of sublimation for sodium. I want the bond enthalpy for Cl2. I need the electron affinity for chlorine. Those are just labels to help me keep track. So you can go and look these numbers up in various tables. So they're on the internet, the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, and there are some of these numbers in your textbook. On an exam or quiz, these numbers would be given to you. So the delta H of formation I already told you was negative 411.2. And we just look these up. Sublimation, negative 109 kilojoules. Uh, the bond enthalpy is 240 kilojoules. So that's the amount of energy that you have to put in to break one mole of those bonds, but we're only making breaking a half mole, so we have to multiply by one half right here. Then the ionization energy, negative, uh, we subtract. 495, that's the amount of energy you have to put in to pull one mole of electrons off the sodium. And last, the electron affinity is negative, so energy is released when you stick an electron onto the outside of the sodium, the chlorine atom. So it likes that. That electron is happier now because it can see the positive core of the chlorine atom. So then we just do the math, and you end up with this number for lattice energy. So this is a good measure of the strength of all the ionic bonds in um, this compound. So now we've calculated lattice energy, which is one of the steps in helping us to understand how mixtures are formed. And so we'll look at that in our next video.